Greetings and welcome to the beautiful South Downs here in Eastbourne. Come and join me as I drive back to Brighton. Now hopefully it's not too noisy on this video today. The wind is pretty crazy here on the South Downs, but we'll go with it, we'll go with it. Now uh, come and join me as we drive back to Brighton. I'm gonna talk a couple of different topics today. Um, I wanna go into a bit more detail about the video that I put out yesterday on uh, popcorn, as I avoid the potholes, there we go. Uh, <laughs> popular conservatism and Liz Truss. Uh, I wanna talk about this constant 13 years of carrot on a stick politics that we've been getting from the Tories. Uh, I also want to dive into a bit of Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin. Should this interview go ahead? Freedom of speech and all that sort of thing. Uh, so let's get into it as I um, just wipe this screen a little bit, a little bit foggy there. Um, carrot on a stick politics. We've had this stuff for the last 13 years from the Tories, but we seem to fall for it every single bloody election, every single time. Even if you go back to David Cameron in 2010, financial crisis had just happened. He wanted to go on a uh, policy of austerity because we all know when a financial crisis happens, who does it actually benefit? Those at the top, they get richer. Uh, so he wanted to go forward with a policy of austerity and cutting public services and cutting as much as possible. Uh, but that's not really that sexy for the general public, is it? For us down, us average Joes, uh, we're not gonna line up in our droves to vote for that. So they put the carrot and the stick out. And back then in 2010, it was a lot about benefit scroungers and stuff, wasn't it? Do you remember back then? Benefit Street on the TV, so you're getting a sick, you know, that person down the street that takes benefits and doesn't work, I'm working really, really hard, and they're getting benefits. That was the carrot on the stick back then, and it worked. Uh, later on in the Conservative tenure, you get the biggest carrot on the stick politics, Brexit. Nigel Farage, Jacob Rees-Mogg, all they want is Singapore on Thames. They want this Liz Truss style uh, economic policy. They want massive tax breaks for the rich. They want trickle down economics. Don't worry, you'll get a little bit. Like those 2P machines that we have down on Brighton Pier. We'll just shove all your money in at the top. It will trickle down. You'll get the odd 2P now and again. That's what Nigel Farage wants. That's what Jacob Rees-Mogg wants. But that, that pesky EU with their you know tax regulation and they, they weren't too keen on tax havens in the Cayman Islands. They were getting in the way, getting in the way of us getting rich. Uh, so what did they do? They needed a carrot on the stick, didn't they? And the carrot on the stick for the Brexit referendum was immigration. Immigration, all these people coming in. Look, are you sick and tired of low wages? All these immigrants are coming in. It's their fault. If we get Brexit done, we'll lower immigration. And of course, have we, as we've seen, it's done the opposite because of course it would do the opposite. It's made immigration worse because we still need doctors, nurses, plumbers, electricians, and the Tory party are not not training up our young people to do that, are they? I mean, there's a conversation to be had here. That's what we really should be doing. There's no opportunities for our young people. I actually think when you leave school, there should be, you know, like when you immigra emigrate to Australia, they have a list of jobs, and if you have that skill, then they'll let you in. That should be the same when you finish school. Finish school, right, these are all the, the areas of industry that we need. You can do a course or apprenticeship, or, you know, if you, you want to be a lawyer, go to a university. It should be like that. Anyway, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here. But that was the carrot on the stick, immigration. And immigration is worse. Uh, because we still need those people. We've had to sort them from other areas. That was the carrot on the stick for Brexit. And now they need a new carrot on the stick. And this is what I was talking about in my video yesterday with Liz Truss. Wokeism. They're still on the anti-immigration thing, uh, but to get you on board with her bonkers, far-right, libertarian economics of just giving as much tax breaks to the rich as possible, giving them as much money as possible for it to trickle down to us, they need that carrot on the stick. And the carrot on the stick is we will get rid of woke. I mean, in the, in the interview, well, the interview, when she did her speech, she has no conviction on this stuff. I mean, she's a terrible public speaker as it is Liz Truss anyway. She's absolutely awful. Um, but she she just doesn't really care about this stuff. It's a tool to get people on her side. Come with us. We'll get rid of woke. And look, you know, the, the, there's conversations to be had 
on things like what we teach our kids in school and impressionable teenagers getting caught up in, in gender politics. There's a conversation to be had there. But the main point that I'm making and the main point that I made in that video is Liz Trust does not care about this shit. Stop falling for the Tory party caring about this stuff. They don't. It's a tool to get your vote. They don't give a shit and they won't implement anything that you want. All they care about is making the rich richer. That's all they've ever cared about. But we seem to fall for it every single time. Now, the generation before me uh, probably held their heads in shame when they thought that they learnt this lesson from the Tory party in the 80s. Oh, never again. We can't vote these people in again. And I'm feeling the same thing now as the Conservative Party are coming to the end of their tenure. I'm thinking, we can't fall for this rubbish anymore. The carrot on a stick politics that we've had for the last 13 years of prominent... Pro, pro, the Tory party have, have pretty much gone on a, on a policy of getting down immigration for the last 13 years. Over the last four elections, they've promised this and uh, immigration is a, a, a record high. When are we gonna stop falling for this rubbish? And uh, it kind of links me quite nicely onto my next topic, which is Tucker Carlson and, and Vladimir Putin. We just, it's so important to, to learn critical thinking. We don't, we just don't do it. We don't do it in this country. We blindly believe everything that we hear. And we need, to, it's, it's, it's an epidemic <laughs> of, of people not thinking critically. And that brings me on to Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin. So should this interview go ahead? Is it gonna warp the minds of the Western world? Or should we always hear both sides of the story? And I am a, a, a free speech advocate. I think that free speech is incredibly important, but it doesn't stop me feeling nervous about the minds that this sort of interview is, is gonna corrupt. And that's the problem. We have a generation of, of, of people that just blindly believe everything they say. I've done a video, I'll, I'll put a, 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 what is it, a little card thing up top if you wanna watch it, of where I just dissect so many different Twitter posts uh, that are complete lies, complete propaganda, and people just blindly believe it. They believe everything that they say. And with a, in an age of so much information where you're getting information from everywhere, every side of the coin, uh, everyone just blindly believes everything they see. So, yes, I think that there should be interviews with Vladimir Putin and they should be out for people to watch. And I, I will watch it. But it doesn't stop me from being scared that the amount of people watching are not thinking critically and not actually thinking, do you know what? Maybe Vladimir Putin is lying about everything he says. Now we're getting to, I haven't seen the full interview, I've just seen clips, I don't even know where you get it. I'll have to do some research to find out where to watch it, but I've seen a few clips this morning. Uh, most importantly, the clip where he's, Putin is basically saying that this war would, would have been over months ago if we, the West, just stopped funding Ukraine. And um, I mean, <laughs> basically making us out to be the bad guys the west making america out to be the bad guys and people do fall for this they do agree with what he's saying and it, it, this is what i'm saying about critical thinking i mean jesus christ did, did we forget what happened everyone was living peacefully in ukraine everyone was happy in ukraine they were going to work they were going to school they were living life they were enjoying life and then suddenly putin comes along and starts murdering people did we forget that aspect of what happened did we forget that that they were just a peaceful democratic country and then suddenly they're invaded by a quote-unquote superpower and they're trying to <laughs> putin is trying to blame us <laughs> this war would have been over if it weren't for us in the West funding Ukraine. It's, it's madness. And then another clip that I saw is when he's trying, uh, Tucker Carlson asks him, but what we're worried about in the West is that you're going to take this further. What about Poland? Are you going to invade Poland? And Putin says, well, as long as they don't, if, if, if they're aggressive against us, then we will. Yeah, of course. But no, I've got no need to uh, invade Poland. He's a chronic liar. You can see it already. Say we do a deal and they get a slice of Ukraine. You can see it in a year's time. You can see some bullshit story that he makes up about, oh, actually, all the Nazis that were in Ukraine, we actually pushed them into Poland. They're all in Poland now and they're being aggressive towards us. So now we need to fight Poland. You can see it coming. You can see it coming a mile off. 
And this is my overriding point of, of, of what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm for free speech. Yes, I want these interviews to be available. I think it's important. But it doesn't stop me from being incredibly concerned that people are just not thinking critically when they're watching Vladimir Putin talk. This guy is a mass murderer. He's evil. And you're blindly believing everything the guy says. It's just... It's crazy. It's crazy. And of course, the internet age has pushed this because we just do have so much access to all sorts of arguments and you know in a way that's good I, I i encourage this i think we should have information from all sides of the argument and be able to see every single different aspect and everyone should have their freedom of speech but we need to do something seriously about critical thinking and getting our not even so much youngsters but the older generation that just sit on twitter all day flicking through blindly believing every single bit of garbage that they go through we need to have serious I, I mean i don't know how you do it maybe you can put into the uh, comment section if you have an idea of how we get the, this generation all generations that are alive right now that are dealing with an overload of information from the internet on how to think more critically not blindly believe every single thing that you read and you know, I, did, I used to do this. I did used to do this. Um, I've, I've, I've said on the channel before, I mean, he's, uh, he's a decisive, divisive fella, Russell Brand. But in his early days, when he first started his YouTube channel, he was the one that started actually making me think critically about what I see in the media. He was the first person to do that. For years and years, I'd blindly believe everything I read in the newspaper. Well, if it's in the newspaper, if it, you know, it must be true. But he was the one in his early days of YouTube where he spent most of his videos criticizing the Murdoch press was his big thing, Fox News and the Sun newspaper. He'd dissect it, point out the lies. And it made me think, Jesus Christ, yeah, what? You know, God, everyone has an agenda. Of course they do. That's the first thing that you need to do when you're looking at news, when you're absorbing information is who's putting it out there? What's their agenda? And uh, yeah, I don't know how you teach that. Maybe you guys have some... Uh, some ideas please put them in the comment section how we how we make people just start thinking more critically because it's so important because the other choice is taking away freedom of speech and we don't want to do that we definitely don't want to do that and um i guess that's the major difference really isn't it because a lot of people compare this war in ukraine most wars always get com uh, compared to world war ii don't they and hitler and the nazis and stuff and you can see the small comparisons Hitler invading Poland, you know, it's, it's, how far is he going to take it? That's the big question with Vladimir Putin. And that's what we're all concerned about in the West. And that's why we're doing, we, most people want to do what we can to help Ukraine because we don't know how far, we don't know what Putin's intentions are. And the mass, the main difference is the internet age that we live in now where Vladimir Putin can go on an interview and share his views across the whole world. You know, he didn't have that in the 1940s. Hitler didn't, wasn't able to put his message across. Um, it was one of the arguments that I had in the early days of this war when uh, Russian media was taken away from this country. A lot of people complaining, you've got to hear both sides of the argument. But, you know, just imagine Hitler, the Nazis, in the internet age. You know, in the 40s, they could only really push their message in Germany. But imagine if they could just push it to the rest of the world, how many minds they'd corrupt. It's an interesting conversation. It's an interesting conversation. And uh, we're not going to be able to fight the internet. We can't fight freedom of speech. It needs to be there. We need to hear all sides of the argument. But critical thinking amongst, amongst our citizens in an internet age is the crucial part, really, isn't it? It's what we really need to get on top of. And, you know, we can do it in schools, uh, but it's the older generation that are pr probably worse in some regards. I think the youngsters now are getting used to social media. They know how it works. Uh, but the older generation, oh my God. I mean, please, if you haven't watched that video that I've done on, on Twitter, I'll put the link down below as well. Uh, just some of the garbage that people just blindly believe. And, and now we're in an age of deep fakes and AI and stuff. Uh, it's it's going to spiral out of control. So this is needed more than anything. As always, guys, please give me your thoughts. Uh, I, I, I think that's about it. We're not going to make it to Brighton. If you're hoping to see Brighton, go back and watch some of my other videos. I've got plenty in Brighton, but we're in New Haven now. <laughs> I think I'll call it quits. 
Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, click a like. You can subscribe up top. There'll be another video. You can check that out as well. Till next time, take care.